according to data, according to history, these are the five markets at risk for losing the most value in a coming recession. Oh, Jared, the housing market in Florida is never going to crash. Everybody has record low interest rates. The market is super healthy. Hey, Jared, don't most people in Florida own their houses all in cash anyways? No, no, and no. And by the way, folks, if you think that low interest rates alone are going to uphold the entire market and keep it from crashing yet again, I've got irrefutable proof that that is not accurate. Top five Florida markets that will see big price drops in the coming recession. And I'm also gonna predict in which order you're gonna see those dominoes fall. I'm gonna show you clear, precise steps on how you can know which markets will suffer the most. And yes, the dominoes aren't gonna fall collectively at the same time. I'm gonna show you which markets are at highest risk to fall first, so that if you're in those marketplaces, you can keep a close eye out for yourself or for your friends. And yes, I realize that a lot of people have been sitting on the sidelines, still have their pre-qualification in hand, still waiting for the marketplace to shift so that they themselves can get in the market and try and buy something that is not so unaffordable as it is right now, because we are at historically high unemployment throughout all the markets in Florida. And people are beginning to wonder, is the price ever gonna shift? Is it ever gonna change? Today, I'm gonna show you in clear terms why it hasn't crashed yet, why you can count on recession coming, and in real terms, which market you should be very careful of because of the economics of those marketplaces right now, as well as historic performance in those same marketplaces in the last recessions where housing prices got hit very hard across Florida. But I will tell you up front, don't do anything crazy based on my advice. I'm just another person on YouTube reviewing input on the data and trying to help you make good decisions. But it's not advice, and you need to know that. You need to make informed decisions on your own behalf for your unique situation. But do me a favor and smash the like button because I took a break and YouTube's buried my content. And this is an update that you want to make sure everybody can see. Let's get started. As we jump into the data, the first thing I want to establish is how do these recessions actually take hold and what can drive all of the folks in Florida that need the cash out of their home to set aside their low interest rate mortgage and cause prices to downturn. Well, the number one thing is employment. All right, first graph, check this out. This is mortgage defaults against unemployment. So you have a graph here showing from Bureau of Labor and Statistics against times where you have mortgages going to default. Take a look. You had all these issues where over time, look at the match. And we're obviously seeing a situation now where we had a moment in time where the pandemic hit, there was all kinds of resources applied, and that's the only thing that staved it off because unemployment was a blip moment in time. But taking a look back at this graph, you have a lot of this activity when we saw back in the 2009, 2010 event where all of this unemployment spiked and there was a direct corresponding issue where people were tapping into their mortgages in order to get cash out of the house. And when they couldn't borrow it, they ended up selling the house and they put a lot of these properties up for sale at the same time as their neighbors and there's no demand for the purchases. And all of a sudden the prices slam down. A lot of people then walk away from their homes altogether. So folks, here's the deal. When there's actually an economic recession, that's when all of a sudden the economic landscape changes and people are going to need cash. It happens time and time again. You have to think about Airbnb and a lot of those folks are seeing their income pressure going down at this very moment. A lot of that's making headlines. Now I wanna make some distinguishing points here because a lot of people always bring up the point that, hey Jared, this is historically low interest rates. And here's the thing I gotta tell you. If you look at our graph here, we go back to the graph on the screen where we had unemployment spike back in 2009, 2010. You gotta understand that the mortgage rates that people had at that time were historically low mortgage rates. So the mortgage rates, yes, a lot of them were averaging five, six, 7%, but you gotta understand the backdrop of the previous 20 years, these mortgage rates were very cheap at that time. And you gotta imagine too, housing prices were all much cheaper at that time because recession creates situations where people will not have jobs and then they're gonna have problems. Now, I, I need to add a layer to this because many of you own homes where a lot of your neighbors have great income levels. That is a factor. So if you have people around you that have high incomes on the average, then there's a good chance that those folks are gonna be less likely to stop paying the interest 
and buckle down even if they lose a lot of equity in their homes. For us to dive into this data and for me to actually organize five of the top markets that are gonna be in serious trouble, we've gotta set aside a few things. And I did all this because I myself wanted to know the answer of what are these markets around me gonna do? As I went through the data, I had to take away the high income potential or the entire areas where people make a very high revenue. So those were all removed. I also took away any marketplaces where inventory in the Florida marketplace had fewer than 50% of that market in mortgages. So you gotta have mortgages if you're gonna have foreclosures. Any of the marketplaces that had high amounts of cash purchases where there was fewer mortgages in that particular market, places like the Villages, even though you guys have had some headwinds and stuff like that, completely out of the picture because there's very low mortgage volume in that particular market. But we are left with many main marketplaces across Florida for us to rank. All the major marketplaces that you know from Orlando, Tampa, Jax, Miami, Pensacola, Panama, all these marketplaces are still in the mix when all of those filtering was added to the mix. Now, the next two factors that I wanted to take a hard look at in order to make this list is which of these marketplaces are super overvalued. And you would say, well, Jared, they're all overvalued. No, no, there's a ranking system. So we actually have data and I pulled and I'm gonna show you how a lot of the marketplaces, we have a comparison factor where how much do the people in these areas make versus how much did price accelerate over the past three to five years. I will tell you that all the major markets that I just mentioned, they're running anywhere from 25 to plus 30% over value against historic norms. Everybody's wondering, will Florida ever crash? And I gotta tell you this, the only thing that we know is that recession changes the entire game. What we don't know is when actual recession will take place. So all of you that's sitting here saying, ha ha ha, you're still making videos, the market's gonna change, this and that. Listen, recession is inevitable. It's inevitable, it's a natural market cycle. The market goes way, way up and the market has recession. And no matter what we wanna put in faith in our economy and the central bankers and all of this, and we believe they're gonna land the plane softly and all that baloney, baloney, it's gonna adjust. There has to be an adjustment and it's coming. So the matter is, when does it come? And I'm gonna show you by ranking some of the marketplaces that we're gonna look at based on which ones are already starting to see unemployment tick up. That's the thing you've got to watch across the board. Every marketplace has an equilibrium of average employment. We've been overheated. Employment's been dramatically lower than the average and that's caused housing prices to boom. And that's caused the amount of mortgage defaults to stay at record lows. But when that market shifts and it's already starting across all the markets we're gonna to highlight today, and when it actually kicks into high gear, goes towards average numbers, because it's way below average, it hits average and then it gets even higher unemployment towards recessionary figures for these areas, you're gonna see prices dramatically shift. One last factor I looked at as I ranked the order is how much price loss did these markets experience in the last recession? So all the marketplaces in Florida, many of them over the 2007 to 2012 season, they only lost 29% in the entire metro area. And some of these markets like Orlando were 50% plus price loss. Half the value of your house gone over a five year span. We're gonna take a look at the historic hurt that those marketplaces experienced. And I know with all that being said, I talk too much, let's get into the list. Marketplaces in danger, folks. The top five, here we go. First list, which five marketplaces are in danger of crashing soonest? Here we go, folks. The marketplaces that you see highlighted, you can see that a lot of the Florida is a natural green map color. Those are metro areas that did not fit into the filter. Now. These other marketplaces you're looking at, you've got Panama City, Tallahassee, Lake, you can see down here, Gainesville, Ocala, Orlando, the whole bit. These marketplaces are unfortunately the sad winners of having been overvalued. So their, their percentage of value, cost of, of a home in these particular marketplaces versus what these poor locals make is way out of line. These particular markets also represent a higher poverty rate in these particular metro areas, meaning there's a bigger slice around the United States average or above. And also all of these markets represent a good majority of properties are actually under mortgage. Number five is Miami. So number one will be the most likely to crash next. Miami is least likely on the top five to see itself crash. Now here's why. Look at the unemployment rate in Miami. 
2.3% was the floor. It's now edged up like a lot of the markets in Florida. It's now hit a bottom, come off of the bottom and starting to go up the other direction. But in Miami, it's got a long way to go. The average employment, unemployment I should say, is 5.87% in Miami. Its average recession marker is 8%. And by the way, let me give you a point of comparison. This is one of the worst markets in the country. You're already starting to see a shift. This is Austin, Texas to give you an idea of what hitting the bottom and coming off of it looks like. Folks in Austin should be watching because this is a move north. In my opinion, Miami is furthest away in the top five from starting the recession point. Next up on the list of five, number four is Orlando, Florida. You can see Orlando, Florida bottomed out around 2.5, 2.6. It's now starting its upward tick towards the mark. So it's right at 2.8% and it's a couple percentage points over the bottom. We've got a 5.32 average employment and we've got a 7% or 7.84% recessionary average. And right now we're at 2.8%. It's obviously made a move off of the bottom. It's a long way under average still, screaming hot, low defaults obviously in this marketplace, but one to watch as it's now going in the other direction. And that makes Orlando fourth in the list, soonest to start a process of recession. Number three on the list, soonest to foreclose, Cape Coral, Florida folks. Again, this one's at 2.8%. Uh, it reached a bottom around 2.5, 2.6, and its unemployment average, 5.25%, and it's at 7.99%. You can see that much like Miami, this one went and actually already touched 3%. It made a spike earlier this year and kind of softened a little bit, but it's coming back up. Now, I will tell you, there's a lot of other factors that make me put this particular market number three because there is a lot of softening already. This is one of the softer markets in all these metro areas. And while I would say any of these marketplaces compared to any market in the West or most of the markets in the West, these markets are strong by comparison. But what we're doing is we're looking at in a rank order and Cape Coral makes number three, all factors considered. Getting towards the top of the list, number two, Likely to start into a recessionary pattern is Deltona MSA. Now, keep in mind, Deltona MSA includes a lot of Volusia County. This is Daytona Beach, Ormond Beach, DeLand, Deltona. This is a very large marketplace going towards the East Coast. And this is ranked in the number two spot because it's made a move significantly off the bottom. If you obviously zoom into this, you can see it tap down around 2.7, 2.8. And now it's at 3.1% and it's actually uh, going towards an unemployment average at 5.67%, tips just over 8% when it's in a recessionary level of unemployment, much like the rest of the marketplaces in the, uh, the, the metro areas here in Florida. That's kind of where things kind of peak on the upper end of an average. So you can see that this one's made number two because it has actually shifted. One of the earliest beach markets that we saw shifting in some of my earlier updates was Ormond Beach. No surprise. You're probably starting to see some of the labor markets in some of these areas change. And as they do, that's when you start to see changes trickle into the marketplace for housing. So the greater Volusia metro area is going to be number two on the list for starting into a recessionary pattern soonest. Top of the list for starting recessionary pattern is Ocala, Florida. Ocala, Florida comes off of the bottom around 3%. It's now pushing 3.4% as of the June 2023 numbers. You can see that it runs an unemployment average at 6.26% being one of the highest. And it also sees the highest recessionary percentage in any of the markets in the entire Florida area. Now, those of you that don't know, Ocala is a... It's got a lot of industrial businesses. It's got a lot of warehouse. It's got a lot of headquartering for things of that nature where you have, there's a lot of large engineering firms, things of that nature um, that are housed in Ocala. And those marketplaces, the labor forces there get impacted when orders go down. And so when recession hits, a lot of this marketplace starts to struggle. The other thing that I will mention, particularly about Ocala is Ocala has remained popular through this last two or three year run up in price because people like to shop on the internet when they're moving to Florida and they're like, wow, Ocala's got so much bang for its buck. So people all over the marketplace would just find Ocala and wanna live there based on what they see. Last but not least, we're gonna look at the markets that I believe in a recession will lose the most value. The number one, two, three, four, and five, top five 
at risk to lose the most equity in a recessionary event. Let's get going. All right, folks, for this list, how did we come to it? Well, obviously we've already filtered out a whole bunch of issues, but the last thing we're gonna look at, which marketplaces are predisposed to losing a lot of equity in a recession? Because we have the most fertile 10 markets sitting right here in front of us for metro areas, we're gonna start with number five. Number five is Ocala. Ocala lost 47.5% of its home value. You can see in Pico 7 was 183,000 for a home. Home prices there bottomed in 2012 for 96,000. $117, making this the number five and top five list for value change in a coming recession. Number four is the Volusia County. This is Deltona, Daytona Beach, and Ormond Beach. You can see here that in 2007, the average home price was $223,675. In just five years, that market shifted to $115,623, making that fourth likely in a recurring recession event to see high equity impact in all the MSAs of Florida. Coming in at number three, we have Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Pompano Beach, the Miami Metro MSA. We have a price, a lot of you are gonna choke when I say these words, 2007 home price here, $270,597. Five short years later, it dropped to 137,700. It was a 49.1% price difference, making the MSA of Miami number three on the state of Florida's list, most likely to shift big in home values for the entire area. Number two on the list, Cape Coral, Fort Myers. 2007 had an average price of 279,600. By 2012, values there had fallen to $140,200, making Cape Coral, Fort Myers number two on the list, and folks already making moves in that direction. There is price shifting going on, particularly in Cape Coral. Number one on the list, Orlando Kissimmee Sanford MSA with a 50.9% price change over 2007, which was 261,996. By 2012, that marketplace had dropped to 128,700 dollars. And folks, listen, as we round out this list, I need to make an important distinction. When people in these marketplaces, they have money to spend. Some of them have good income. Miami is one, Orlando's one, Tampa's one. Some of these marketplaces, there's a, 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 a population base that has income even in recession. And those people are likely to make those interest payments no matter what. But I gotta tell you, a lot of this mix, even in Miami and Orlando, where you actually see a disparity in price change, you gotta understand they're market by market. Some of these areas in Orlando were really hit hard because there's a lot of Airbnb purchasing. There's a lot of entire condo developments where those particular properties are short-term rental based and they dramatically dropped in value and they kind of skew certain numbers. So certain places in the marketplace didn't dramatically lose so much and others did. One of my investment strategies, something the people I work with, is I try to make sure they're not just investing in low, less desirable areas. The areas that tend to have higher poverty, if you look at historic numbers against this 2007 to 2012 range, time and time again, those metro areas tend to have more foreclosures in them. So you gotta watch your chess pieces. Where are you invested in these particular markets and make smart decisions accordingly? How's the market around it? How is employment in that particular area at the moment? How's your cash flow on your investment property? Could it afford to shift 10% or 15% away from where it's at now and you still be okay for a year or two? But how did you like this list? Did you appreciate the content? If you did, smash the like button, drop a comment below, because if you do, I'm gonna shift my future updates towards doing some zip code area focus inside these five metro areas. We're gonna go into those metro areas and make case by case prediction inside the city. So actually see, hey, this entire west side or this entire north side, huge risk lies in these particular areas. And if that is something you'd find valuable, let me know in the comments, but I appreciate your feedback and always watching this channel and we'll see you on the next one.